So here we are again on the site of the geologic prototype. Last time we were here, we were pouring concrete in our footings. And since then, we have filled in the inside of the footings with gravel. And now we are going vertical. And to do that, we are using some locally sawn and harvested timbers, some white pine timbers that are going to form the timber frame for the building that will hold all the, the load-bearing structure and that's what's going on behind us and we can get a little closer and see some of the details. So last time we were here we were placing concrete into this footing here which is like a big uh, grade beam and we've done that and then we put on the mud sill here uh, pressure treated and then a second plate here which we'll use to attach the structural insulated panels to. They're out in this plane and we have here the timbers that are the locally sawn and planed white pine, native species, come, came from, oh, 15 miles away from here. And it's a very simple timber frame. We're not doing traditional joinery. We're doing basically bolts and plates to hold it together, which saves time. But it still will look really nice. And it is the structure of the building. But we actually have a couple of different systems for walls happening here. We have the sawn timber frame and we have some engineered lumber. This is like uh, plywood basically that's very strong. It's laminated lumber and we're using this in this application because we want to bury it in the wall. This is the kitchen and we didn't want to have a timber element sticking into the kitchen cabinet. So we're using this. It's the same strength as the six by six pine, but it's three and a half inches by seven and a quarter inches and fits in a standard two by four wall. Now on the back here of the house, this is the entryway mudroom and this will have a shed roof. And back here what we've done is used a typical two by four stud wall, which is very inexpensive. We have a lot of storage back here so the timber frame wasn't going to be a very useful aesthetic element so we're just using a standard 2x4 wall here and then the way all these walls are going to be put together is on the outboard side of the structure we're going to have what are called structural insulated panels and that's a sandwich made with oriented strand board foam and then another layer of oriented strand board and they're very strong they they provide the lateral support for the walls and they will get attached on the outboard side of this wall at the bottom right down here in this space and at the top they'll connect to the top of the wall we were just at the north wall which is a two by four stud wall and we do that for various reasons that i mentioned and in the rest of the house we have a system where we have the six by six post and it is attached to a steel post base which is anchored through the plastic into the footing, the concrete. And we've sealed that hole with caulk so that we're not putting any holes in this air barrier here. This air barrier goes under this gravel and it will come up and be attached to the interior part of our structural insulated panel once we get that and that will form a air barrier uh, along with the walls and other systems we do that we'll talk about later. Um, so on this wall we have the timber post, we, have, we will have a 2 by 4 stud wall that we'll use to run wiring in, we'll also insulate that with cellulose and then we'll have the structural insulated panel outboard of that. And as I mentioned, that's a six and a half inch panel that gets screwed here. It's going to be screwed to uh, timber members at the floor system. And the reason we're using different wall systems in different parts of the house is because we're always trying to maximize the, the green building materials, the cost, the labor cost for how efficient it is to build that way, and the energy efficiency. And there are lots of ways this can be done and we can debate about the use of foam products um, to us. For this system, the insulated panels give us the ability to put the structure together relatively quickly 
which saves on labor cost and it gives a very high R value which makes for a very efficient building and we use the timber frame in this case partly for cost because it's a fairly simple system to put together and it gives us our structure relatively quickly uh, but we also do it for aesthetics if we wanted to build the absolutely cheapest wall we would use a traditional stud wall frame so we're not trying to use any one particular system exclusively we're mixing and matching where it makes most sense to create the best overall product.